Hey Penny Pals, Kumit in here. Uh, wanted to show some of my displays, I guess. I've had a lot of people ask me questions like, oh wow, you know, I'd seen that post on the forums, it looked really cool. Uh, I kind of wanted to do just a rundown of the frames I've done in the past and then kind of give that as a precursor to what I'm going to do in my next couple videos, which is going to be kind of walk you through the process of, okay, here's a pile of pins. Now what do I do with that pile of pins? Do I just throw them in a drawer? Do I keep a lanyard hanging around the house all day? What I do, just kind of give you some options, some different things you can do with your pins once you get them. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do anything like I do. You don't have to do a display. If you're comfortable with keeping them in a drawer, what, 360 days out of the year, that's great that is it's your collection you do with it what you want to do but i like to kind of have some i never really had any art on my walls and so first thing that came to mind when i was i was kind of going through some some rough times uh just with life and work and everything and i was kind of I was seeing a therapist and one of her things was well what do you do when you go home uh when i go home i get on my computer or go to sleep one of the two and she says, "Well, tell me about your, tell me about your apartment or your house. Tell me what, what what's on the walls. What's going on?" Said, the only thing that's on the walls was plain white paint. And so, her thought was that I was miserable at work. I was miserable at home. Well, I didn't want to go home. I didn't have anything to come home to. It was me. It was just me. I didn't have a dog. I don't have any kids and anything like that. And I had plain white, boring walls to come home to. So I would just want to sit and stare at a TV screen or stare at a a computer screen just to get some kind of entertainment in so she suggested putting up some art and my thought was I'm not an art person I don't collect art or anything like that but I kind of do actually uh, every time I go to a PAX I get at least one comic from Penny Arcade signed if not more um, and so I thought well I could get those signed and put those up on the walls those would be cool so I got a few comics signed and got them uh, really nicely framed up put them on the walls and then I kind of got addicted. I started seeing all this cool stuff that I was like, I could I could hang that on the wall somehow. Um, and then of course with packs for me comes pins. So I figured out why not put my pins some way where I could display them that's uh, not just fun, not just cool, but actually a piece of art. So that's what I did. Uh, my first, my very first display was actually right here uh east 2014 it's it's the biggest one i've done to date the heaviest because this was kind of my first attempt at a display um it's pretty heavy it's probably pushing 10 15 pounds something like that uh glass here i took the scarf which is pretty obvious and kind of laid it out so it shows the the 10 years um it's going to be backwards on the screen but you guys get the idea I, I really like the idea of incorporating the badge, so I try and incorporate my PAX badge into all my displays, and then all the pins from PAX East 20, uh, 2014. So, just kind of give you guys a second to scan over it, hold it up. I don't do the staff pins as part of the display because that's just that's a lot of pins, and they're they're at every pack, so well, not every. Sometimes they don't go to Australia. Certain staff members have problems getting over there, but um, so I just I would have to do that for every display, and because they're at multiple packs, and so I got this done at Michael's. Uh, it was just a custom frame that I took. I took all my stuff, laid it out, and said, "This is what I want to do. Can we make it happen?" And the the guy there kind of helped me a little bit with it, and I said, "This is how I want to lay it out," and so we did did it from there. Um, it's got the nice hanging wire here, frame wire that you can use. So I hang it up on my wall upstairs. It's got a real thick kind of wood tone frame, black on the sides, brown on the interior a little bit. Uh, it's, it's my first, maybe not my favorite, but I love them all. So includes all of those pins from that. That was my first packs where I really just went nuts on pins. I decided at that point that I had to catch them all because of this little guy right here, the 10th anniversary shields that put me over the edge. I had collected 
several pins from PAX Prime 13. That was my first PAX, but PAX East thir uh, 14, excuse me, is really what kind of got me 100% got to catch them all mentality. Especially once I put them on the display, I was like, yeah, this is it. So I decided to start doing that with every show I go to. Every time I go to a PAX, I make it my goal to collect all the pins and put them up in a cool display around my house because that way I've got something that every time I look at it, it brings back memories of that specific experience. It's not just uh, each pin isn't an individual memory. All the pins are a memory. All the pins are have a nostalgic and sentimental value to me now because that is what the show is about to me. It's not just pins because pins to me encompass PAX itself, it encompasses Penny Arcade, it encompasses the great community that uh, the pins has introduced me to, our little pin, Penny Pal community. So it's kind of what it is for me. Uh, the next display I did was PAX Prime 2014. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to PAX Prime as well. This one I went a little bit overboard, but I think this is probably still my favorite out of all my displays just because it's it's really clean it's really it's not as it's not as big but it incorporates more stuff but still looks really clean and kind of even keeled so this is actually a, a small the smallest t-shirt I could buy uh, I got this framed at Michael's as well while I was at PAX I bought a t-shirt for me to wear and I bought a super super small one to use as a display, just kind of putting the logo out there in one big, big place, as opposed to just the small patch and badge and the shield and that pin there. So it kind of brought it all together. I use the little borders here to make that kind of pop out in each section, kind of pops right there, especially with that all that red on that four day badge right there and then of course all the show pins again this discounting staff pins they're not on there kind of give you a little scan how it looks uh, as far as how all the pins are arranged it's completely arbitrary if you want to put all how you want to put the pins is completely up to you there's no right or wrong way to do it I do it what aesthetically looks best to me I try and group the pins that are from like oh these are the guys from bandland or, or gals guys and gals from bandland these are the folks from bandland these are the the expo hall pins these are the show pins i try and group them with some semblance of logic behind it but again everyone's different everyone doesn't have to have the exact same pin display and do the exact same thing with their pins that's one of the great things about it so you don't have to group them in a certain order they're to me, aesthetically, these are this is the way they're laid out, and that's how is how they're the the optimum um, how they're laid out. That's the optimal way to lay it out to me. To you, it could be completely different. You could hate the way I do it, and that's cool because they're your pins. You do with them what you want. Um, so both of those are custom frames. I had those custom framed at Michael's because uh, they were having some crazy deal. Now. The big thing to think about for that is it's kind of expensive. Each one of those frames, uh, the the large one from East 14 probably was in the two to three hundred range, uh, just because of the size. And then the smaller 14 was actually more expensive. It was in the three to four hundred range, just because of all of the extra stuff that was involved in it. So if you're thinking about a custom frame. If that's something that you're like, yeah, I really want that. I want to, to make that a piece of art that I hang on the wall. Some things you got to think about. First thing, it's permanent. Uh, you could, I guess, break this glass open, pull the, the paper off the back and pull all your pins out. But you're not guaranteed that all those pins are going to be as intact when you gave them to the, uh, to the staff. Because they're going to make it work. They're going to make it fit, make it look cool. They're not going to worry as much about preserving the pins as maybe you or I would. Uh, second thing, it's expensive. Like I said, I, I, it was a, a good chunk of cash dumped into making those displays, but if you've got the money and it's something you want, then there it is. If you don't have the money but it's something you want, then you save up or you, you make cuts other places, pre preferably not making places in, uh, don't make cuts to paying your bills, don't make cuts to putting clothes on your back 
or food in your belly. Everything else, it's all what entertains you. Um, time. Third thing to think about for a custom frame is time. You're not going to come straight home from PAX and be able to hang this up on your wall. You're going to have to wait a while, depending on your local frame shop, if you choose Michael's or if you choose a local frame shop or any other of the craft stores that do framing and things like that, um, there's going to be a wait time. It's going to take them a while for parts. It's going to take them a while for labor. It's going to take a while to get them all arranged. So usually for me, it's about a month. Uh, about a month after I take everything to, uh, to Michael's where I go, it's about how long it takes to get all the pieces in, get them all assembled, and have it ready to go. So... Those are just some things to think about if, if a custom frame is kind of the direction you want to go. There are a lot of other different ways to go with displaying your pins. Uh, you can, if you have a, a job where you wear a lanyard, you can sometimes put them on a lanyard. Uh, stuff like Carl, the Carl pin looks great on just a lapel. It's very classy, sleek design, so you could display it just on a lapel of a, of a suit jacket. But I'm more focused on displaying on permanent displays, on displaying them in your home or in your workplace or things like that, stuff that you can do. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to fit one of these behind your desk, but there are other alternatives. Uh, for example, I did not go to Australia 14, but I had a pen pal who was able to get me all the pens from Australia 2014. So I didn't want to do a major epic display because for one there's so few actual pins there I mean there's what two four uh, six eight eight pins total so that's not it's not a whole lot of pins but with this little shadow box I bought I bought from the craft store which I, I keep using Michaels as my reference but that's there's one really close to my apartment they get really good prices they've always done great by me so I continue to give them my business uh, this is just like a 12 by 12 inch shadow box um, the biggest problem I have is it's pretty thick and it's pretty wide right there. So there's a lot of depth to it. So I can put this, I, I usually put it like, uh, on my railing upstairs cause I'm not really afraid it's going to fall. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, but you can't see it from an angle. Like if the angle's too far, it really blocks a lot of those pins and the, the angle doesn't have to be too much to start blocking some of the pins. So it's really only an optimal piece of art, kind of straight on dead shot, and you're getting a lot of reflection off the glass onto my iPad that I'm recording this on, but I'm pretty sure you guys can get the idea. Um, so these are really simple. You kind of buy these fresh, uh, about put the shadow box fresh out of the box, but it's just wrapped up. And then on the back here, you've got these little uh, retention clips that kind of pull off. Uh, I'm not too keen on popping them off because it took me a lot of work to get these in there but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I love you guys so for those of you that are on the fence about well, I don't know if I should buy a shadow box or what I do this way you can see the actual insert and then you can kind of gauge how you want to do it so in the end it's just a, some pieces of wood with a piece of glass in the front uh, but the backing is kind of this some are cardboard some are cork some are, I mean, they, they vary from box to box. You'll have to check yours uh, at the store you go to pick it up or double check, really double check the details online. This one uh, has kind of a felt covered, really thin, maybe eighth to a quarter of an inch of foam on top of a hardwood kind of uh, particle board backing right here. The pin posts for this are actually, you can barely see them kind of poking out the back here so that's something to bear in mind too how much back room do you have so the biggest issue I had with these is that these pins are never going to come off of this because some of the posts got bent and it's a real problem but that these pins aren't ever going to be traded they're not going anywhere these are mine uh, I just use a quick hot glue to secure the uh, patch on there and it stayed pretty well with just a hot glue gun you could probably use uh, fabric glue or anything like that. You could probably even iron it just like it's meant to be done because that felt is just fabric. Um, and then just getting these pins actually through that particle board was kind of rough. So keep that in mind when it comes time for you to do your display and if that's something you're comfortable with, if you're not 
if you know that these pins are never going anywhere and they're going to permanently be installed in the shadow box, you may not have a problem with that. But in the end, they are collectible. So you may want to preserve them as best you can so that someday you can trade them off if you decide to do whatever. But that's all personal preference. So bear that in mind when you're looking at shadow boxes and display options in the future. One of the other ones I've seen a lot lately on Amazon, I'll see if I can find the link and maybe like post it in the details or something to give you guys. I've seen it in WhatsApp and on the forums a couple of times. It's actually a really great, uh, I don't want to say cheap, inexpensive, because cheap makes it sound bad, but it looks like it's really well put together. I actually am debating buying one for my collection as well because it's it's similar to this shadow box that I just showed you, but instead of it being a hard wood back, it's kind of got an insert in it with uh, foam or particle board or something to that effect, but covered in felt where you can place the pins and you can easily place them and remove them. And it has a little glass door on it. So you can constantly be expanding your collection because if you're not sure how you want to divide up your pins, like, oh, do I want to, I want to show, I, I've only, I've got 50 pins. I've got, all, I've got all my favorite pins here and I don't know what to do with them. If you're not a completionist or you are on your way to being a completionist and you still want to display your pins, but your collection's not complete, that's a great, great option because it's, it, I, I think they were saying it ran about 50 bucks, which compared to a custom frame is dirt cheap. And the fact that you can add or remove pins ad nauseum is just a great, great tool for someone that doesn't want to make a, a permanent, like these that I have, uh, permanently under glass kind of thing. So I'll see if I can track down that link and maybe either put it in the comments or put it in a link on here so that folks can check it out to see. Uh, I haven't gotten one myself. I'm kind of on the fence about buying one. Uh, if I do, I'll definitely do a review of it for you guys so you can kind of have my first or second, you can have secondhand knowledge about what it looks like and get a little bit of information on it. Uh, some, so I ran into a problem once I started getting all these displays uh, problem one was I have all these other pins, so I've got my pins from each show, but I've got all these other pins. What do I do with those pins? Well, Penny Arcade kind of solved that mostly for me. Uh, a lot of us pin folks are familiar with at the end of the year around Christmas or the holiday season, uh, Penny Arcade will do this pin poster, and it has all of the official Penny Arcade uh, pins, not the partner pins like you'll find in the Expo Hall in the show or in Bandland for the most part, but the strictly official, mostly Gabe, Tycho, uh, Hannah, Lookouts, core sets, things that you buy either on the online store or from the official PAX merch booth itself. So they make this poster and there's a lot of stuff you can do with that poster. Me personally, I decided to take it and get it framed uh, custom. So the frame itself is just a custom frame, kind of a metallic brushed metal look to it. It's got the hang the frame wire in the back across the top so I can hang it up on the wall. But this is just the uh, Penny Arcade poster mounted on a piece of mat. Um, it's kind of like a thick, real thick foam on the back of this. So these pins stick into it really well and are really well supported. So that was an easy solution for me because I didn't want to put them under glass because one at the time I was missing a couple of the pins because they either hadn't come in the mail. I didn't have a DLC pin at the time, but I do now. And so I just put it up there with the rest to kind of keep it, keep the poster complete as opposed to putting it somewhere else where it may not get all the love and attention it deserves. I'm a little bit crazy and down here at the bottom is where I put the original year variants, the variant core set, the variant merch, the variant Penny Arcade logo, and the variant uh, Cardboard Tube Samurai and Zombie Tycho. But that was a pretty easy thing to do. I didn't want to, again, put the glass over top of it because I didn't necessarily want it to be permanent. 
Uh, this is just kind of like a secondary collection for me. So you could do something like that. That's relatively inexpensive. I know that's less than uh, less than $100 to get that custom set up and everything. Just based on size, it's what makes it more expensive than anything else. Mm -hmm. You can just buy a poster frame uh, on your own and lay the poster down, put that poster frame around it and do pretty much the same thing by yourself. Uh, I just don't have all of my aesthetic and creative talents are not anything that involves manual dexterity. I just, I can't do it. So I have someone else do it for me. Uh, you can buy just a generic poster frame that would probably cost you anywhere from 10 to $30, uh, where you could mount it yourself. You could do the same thing, just be the, the works on you. So you can save yourself a month, some money by doing, doing the work on your own. Uh, I've, I've never actually seen someone, actually no I have, I have seen a couple of people do that. Um, I think it was Mae West uh, on the Penny Arcade forums that did a an actual, like she mounted that entire poster on a poster frame, went and got all of it signed and all that, it looked really cool. But again, it just, it comes down to you, what you want to see, what you want to look at, because it's your art, it's going to be on your wall. But. Speaking of wall, I kind of started to run out of wall space. Uh, I'm an apartment person. I, I don't own a home, don't really have any desire to own a home. I like to be able to have the option to move, uh, but I'm running low on wall space now because of all these cool frames and stuff I've got. So this year, I decided, 2015, I decided to get a little bit smaller. The first PAX this year was the inaugural PAX South. So I made a much smaller frame since there were a lot smaller pins, but or a lot fewer pins at PAX South than there were before. So I kind of went the direction uh, similar to Australia where, but this one was custom because I actually went, I actually did go to PAX South since it's uh, about five miles that direction. Uh, so this is a lot smaller, more, much more manageable frame. And it still shows off the, some of the cool stuff. It still shows all of the set all the show set that still show I still get to show off my badge I get to show off the cool patch and I get to show off the limited edition pin and this is the size of pretty much a standard picture frame uh, this was custom done but it was less than a hundred dollars I think because of a sale so that's something to also keep an eye out for is sales because they are a legitimate thing uh, again custom done at Michaels it's got the paper backing to keep everything secure back there, much lighter, much easier to manage. You can put this on a, on a desk at your office or something. Uh, it's a much easier thing. One of the cool things they did on this one, uh, if you look here, see if I can get close enough to the camera, you probably can't because of the glare, but these little plastic bumpers kind of keep it level on the wall with this uh, frame wire here so it doesn't bump up against your wall, doesn't hang funny. I'm, I'm really happy with the way this turned out because I was able to find the colors that kind of match the theme of Pack South. I was able to incorporate my badge and all the, the show pins. So I was really happy with the way that one turned out. And that's one of the fortunate things about packs. We pretty much always have a color scheme. Every PAX has its own color scheme. Whether or not you like that, that's, that varies from person to person. Uh, some people don't like certain colors, they're just not a fan, but having that preset color scheme can really make your creative stuff a lot easier to pull off. So if you like, if you like blue, you've got PAX Prime. If you like red, you've got PAX East. You don't have to stick with those themes. You can kind of force uh, your own color scheme based on the pins or whatever you like to see on your walls. If, you, if you're not a fan of blue, then don't go with blue. Pick some other colors, make those mattes kind of work for you because those mats, uh, when I say mats, I'm referring to, like you can kind of see right here, the stuff that kind of covers the edges and actually frames it better, frames your, your art better than the actual physical frame itself. It's just kind of a standard thing used in professional framing. Uh, I like all the PAX colors, so it makes it, gives each of it its own feel so that I can kind of use that. So then came PAX East 2014. Uh, if you look, again, I went with the smaller, a lot smaller, but I was still able to incorporate all the pins. 
And that's the big thing because I'm running out of wall space, but I still want to keep all those pins in there and keep it, keep it kind of clean, keep it classy. So if you look, here's all the pins from uh, PAX East 2014. I still was able to incorporate my badge. I was able to incorporate the limited edition pin, the patch, and the logo. And this one, again, was a lot cheaper than those larger frames just because you're paying for square footage, like length and width, total area how many cuts they have to make, how many different mats they have to use. So it, saved, it saves a lot of money, it saves a lot of wall space as well with something like this. That's not to say that this is any necessarily better or worse than any other display solution, it's just different. So I'm going to reiterate some stuff. I'm gonna say it now, I'm gonna say it in all, pretty much all of my later videos as well where I record kind of the making of one of my frames. Uh, the One of the hardest things about a, a piece of art or a display like this is keeping it free of smudges and dust and particles and stuff like that. Um, especially with pins like, for example, uh, our beloved Club PA pin. Like, you, you can maybe make it out. I don't know how good my camera is, but like there's, that's a lot of smudging and uh, not really corrosion, but tarnish tarnish is the word i was looking for um, a lot of tarnish on these and most of the the veteran and even new pin folks kind of recognize real quick that these gold pins really lose a lot of their their shine and their gloss as soon as you touch them you, you look at them and they've got fingerprints on them and they've got all that stuff so that's something to bear in mind i actually purchased a jewelry care cloth and i want to see I want to do it live here with you guys and see if it actually works as well as it was sold to me. So it's just that you, know, you can't read it because it's going to be backwards. But uh, it's just a little cloth that's used to clean jewelry, like rings and necklaces and stuff like that. So it's kind of a two-sided deal. Inside and outside. Inside is this little off-white yellowish to remove all the the tarnish and then the outside one is to polish. So I'm gonna try and polish up my tarnished Club PA pin and see how it looks. So it's hard to, to avoid touching these pins because they're handled, we use them at packs all the time. Um, we put them on lanyards, we take them off lanyards, they change hands here and there. So getting them with a good keeping a shine and keeping all of the the fingerprints and smudges and dust off of them is just a chore. So, so far I've got like one big almost permanent fingerprint looking thing up here. Uh, I'm just kind of using this inside. Oh, um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's from the, like that little, all that dirt and tarnish is actually from the cover the front of this pin. So I'm gonna use the second half here and see what, what we've got. It may actually be my new solution to cleaning pins. Uh, this one was actually recommended by Merch Mistress in our one of our chats and WhatsApp. She just was like, hey, try this. And so I went, I was gonna buy it on Amazon, but I didn't wanna wait. I mean, really impatient. So I just ran to a local jewelry store that had these. Uh, how much was it? Price tag still on it. Uh, 283 so less than five bucks. You may be able to take care of all your pins, get rid of a lot of that tarnish. It's really hard to see. I'd have to get a, a really high def, high res camera. I'm just using my iPad. But personally, this looks at least 10 times better. Uh, it's still a little smudged but still has a little tarnish and it's lost a little bit of its luster, but give it one more good run here. See what we're, what we're working with. And then one more good polish on the side. Yeah, it's got a little bit of its sheen back. You can probably see there's still a little bit there, but it definitely made a difference. I can say that for sure. Uh, not as bad. Still a little bit of tarnish, but look at that after. So here's the, this side is before. And then this side is after just a 
a couple real quick rubs on this pin so you can see that there is actually quite a bit of because our, our fingers and our skin have all of the the oil and things like that from being handled so you're going to see that if, the more you handle the pins the more you're going to see that so if you know you're going to do a custom display with them uh, be sure and just kind of avoid handling them too much or take it as soon as you can the first video i'm going to do after this one is going to be actually making a display for my prime 2013 set and a lot of those have lost their luster just from being handled over the the past couple of years and the fact that a lot of the behemoth are super shiny super uh, glossy a lot of silver you can see a lot of the metallic stuff in them so that should be fun i'll test this cloth out on those guys and see how they look when i do that video uh, but that's pretty much most of my displays I've done so far. I hope that you tune in to see the upcoming displays that I'm going to have for uh, the Prime 13 set that I did and then uh, subsequently the Prime 2015 set. As soon as my pins and everything get to me, which uh, big shout out to Penny Arcade staff member merch mistress she actually went out of her way uh, personally to SeaTac airport and found my bag with all my pins and everything in it and personally shipped it to me as opposed to trying to wait for the airport to find it which based on the description that they when i gave the report that the bag had been lost between seattle and san antonio uh, they would have never found it they had no information it didn't have any tags on it it would have just been lost forever I would have lost all my pins, I would have lost my camera, I would have lost my forum bag, all the dirty clothes and stuff, whatever, but all that stuff, would have, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of sentimental and personal value to those that's not easy to replace. So, big again, big thank you to Merch Mistress for helping me out after this most recent PAX. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. hope the video kind of gave you a little bit of information, a little bit of overview, and it wasn't just something for me to show off. A little bit of it was to show off kind of what I've got and what I've done with all these cool pins. Uh, stay tuned. Check back later for more videos and more display options, more Penny Arcade stuff and more fun stuff. Thank you guys for watching.